Okay, today I am going to go through a little bit because there's a little slight changes. Okay. Um, I am at the part where I am designing my burning chamber, especially this part here. Now I went to the store and I got all the parts here because of my vacuum hose. This is where the air is going to come in. It's going to go through here, it's going to go through here, and I chose the three-quarter of inch piping. Now it's going to go through here. This is where the separators are. This is where the, uh, uh, the wall is of uh, uh, the stove. And it's going to go through there, it's going to go through there, and it's going to drop down, and it's going to sit into this bowl here. That's where the old, the blower is, and it's going to sit into that bowl, so it can blow the air around, and then it'll burn. The problem is, is that I chose this big. Why I chose this big is because these are too small. These are well, a quarter of inch um, uh, soft copper that I got, and when I put it into an inch pipe. It works really good. It had enough air and everything, but the blower making a lot of noise, which I did not like. So I had to step up a little bit on this one to make a little less noise. But the problem is, is that I was thinking is that I have to keep this as much as simple as I can, cheap as I can, and also I have to minimize all the parts including welding um, because this this build was supposed to be non-welding um, it might change just one thing but other than that I want to keep it as a non-welding now um, you can do without follow this concept um, and do the uh, three fourth three, three fourth of an inch pipe it's close to this right here close to my lighter right here versus that uh, why did I choose that? Is because the quarter, uh, the, the three four, uh, three eighths, I believe. Uh, this is one fourth, um, five sixteen, I think. Um, I'm not sure. One step up further. That's all. Um, uh, would be the pipe that I want is because it is a lot bigger and less cleaning out. And also, too, is that because I wanted to keep everything cool. Now, imagine, let's go back to this again. Imagine if the pipe comes through here, goes to run through here, and then it bend down to here and go into my chamber. What happened is the flame would go upward here, and it will keep this pipe hot, as always. So, this pipe will be hot all the way to here, then it will start to cool down. and might have to put, like, a little deflector or whatever there which is fine but I don't want to go through that process because it's now I'm making this costly and that's what I'm, I'm trying to eliminate so I am going to go back to the new simple old easy way I'm gonna go through from there this is my new drawing to the five gallon bucket I'm gonna go down to the solenoid as is, as always then I'm gonna use the um, uh, the Nita valve it's gonna go into my drip and it's just gonna go all the way straight in but this time it's gonna go sideways and I'm gonna drill a bunch of little holes tiny holes in it so that way it will drip nicely in the round uh, thing here so I'm gonna make it gravity and then make it round so it's going to kind of like go down a little bit onto the, the burning chamber here. So imagine if it starts up here, around here, and it's going to go down like that, and it's going to leak down to there. So it's, it's going to sit in the center like this right here, which I'm going to make a little thing where it's going to sit nicely in there so I don't have to play with it. Um, but just like a half a loop, not the full loop, because full loop I won't be able to loop it through. But if I just do half a loop... Um, that way, I'm going to have to drill a hole through here. 
The reason why I drilled the hole through here is because I want to keep the heat minimized. You have to remember, the flame's gonna come up here. It's gonna heat this copper pipe up. This copper pipe up is gonna go all the way through my stuff here, which I don't want. Because I'm keeping this as minimal as I can. Not that I wanna save money. I'm gonna, I might just loop a little bit, but because I am using, uh, I believe, the 3 8 um, This is the one four for the, um, this is a full, this is the, the, the drip valve that I'm using, okay? That's my drip valve. Uh, this is for the uh, air. Oil and, and water separator. Um, this I got this from Harbor Freight for five ninety nine. Um, I got a few other stuff. It just costs again, costly again. And I'm trying to minimize this so in case somebody wants to do this, they can follow the same step. Um, so what I did was I'm going to use I'm going to use cheap parts. Uh, the only part that you can't be cheap on is the copper. Um, I'm going to use the pneumatic um, uh, air hose. Uh, all the connector will be all air connectors, which I'm going to get at Harbor Freight, which is like a dollar twenty for like connectors like these versus at Home Depot. They're like uh, three dollars or something. So you can cut like a third of that price or even a quarter of that price if you go with the with the um, uh, air compressor connectors uh, which that's what I'm going to end up doing and I'm going to step that from the air compressor to the uh, for the copper pipe right, right here and just go right through here from here that's the only thing that I have to get a part on that I might not be able to save any money is from here to go through here and go to the chamber but I believe that's the cheapest way and also too is I have to dig a hole through my stainless steel thing here and I have to convert it to something I have to make something so the oil won't drip all the way down and then the water the, the air has to go up from here to go through here so that's one thing that I'm I'm not gonna like uh, because I have to put it upward through this chamber right here it's gonna have to go through here I'm gonna go up a little bit and then it's gonna it's uh, I'll put a cap on it maybe something like this right here it's gonna come up to here like that and then this is going to be underneath here, underneath from there. So I might make it in a way that I'd be able to screw this all the way down and then put something on top here. Or either I can put a little sand or something um, or a little deflector um, uh, piece and then put uh, high heat silicone in so it can seal at least right around here. Although this is going to be hot, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to drip around there. And also too, my dad said that you can just put sand in there because uh, sand will once it get hot, it'll burn anyway, so it doesn't doesn't do anything. But I'm gonna try my other way first, which is I'm just gonna put a little uh, metal right around here, and I'm gonna seal it. I'm gonna cut a piece of metal, uh, not metal metal, but like a a thin piece of metal, and then I'm gonna screw this in, put it down through here, and screw that all the way down. Uh, so sort of like a a nut like. Or even use something like this right here that you can do. And it has had a nut in there already. Which I can put it upward. And then I'm going to screw the other part into it. And then the bottom here, I'm just going to stick this, uh, the male piece in. And then I'm going to stick this piece in. Right here. Or I can actually curve them. Because remember, underneath my chamber here. I have like about six inches upward, which I'm going to try to use the air to come up this time. Sort of like my original plan was to use the fluted pan. But the problem is the, with the, the fluted pan is that this part here, they don't make one that actually fall. When they make one that falls, it's really short. But when they, the, 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 the bigger, the tall one that I like, they actually have uh, underneath there, they got... They got this stupid thing that is underneath there. I might rivet them, but the problem is, is that high heat, the rivet might melt. Uh, so I might have to get a thing to screw it, but then it'll f it won't fit on top of my chamber correctly. So I'm running into a little problem here with all that stupid crap and the 
the original i like to keep this part because like i said if i do it like this right here which i just showed you earlier the heat will come all the way up here and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like that one and if it's gonna burn like overnight and stuff like that i'm pretty sure it's gonna get really hot so anyway that's my part from now and that's where i'm at i'm going to show you my um my um my drip valve that i modify for this here okay and i'm gonna put this i'm gonna take this out for a second and i'm going to set the camera down so i can actually would able to to show you guys this part here Oops. Oh, stepping on things down here Okay, I hope you can see from there. Actually, you move it to here. It'd be a lot easier so I can show you something that I modified, which it might be useful to you. Which, like I said, I got it. It's this for uh, $5.99. And you're going to have to take this apart here. Oh, and a, a plier. A vice grip. I need to take this apart. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Did I just break that? No? Okay, not yet. Good. Just the stupid screw that's bent a little bit. You gotta be a little careful for this stupid thing right here. That's supposed to release like um, liquid and stuff. Uh, but I think it's like a, one of those little stupid bicycle thing. Uh, bicycle valves. Uh, and that's all. It sits right on top of that. I'm gonna blow and make sure. Nope, I didn't break it. Alright. So I just have to be careful on that part. Anyway, take all this crap out. And what I did was... If you can see that moon right there, I actually sat there and I filed that all the way down to one of my file to make it a moon. And I've tested what happened is when you put it in here and when you put all this contraption in, don't put your filter in, just put that back right there. What happened is that would be your indicator. Okay. I test it and it works really good. What happened is oil going to come through here when you turn on your needle valve. It's going to fill this up. It's going to fill all the way up until it leaks through. So that would be your indicator as well. So you know if it goes too high, if the flow rate goes too high up here, you can actually mark the section right here, these little things right here or you can put a piece of sticker or whatever and you can see if the oil filled up to here whatever make a little simple little ruler or something and and and, and or a little cut with a razor blade or something then you know where your favorite spots are or whatever i'm going to make all different uh, gauge and i'm going to stick it on here i'm going to make a little sticker and i'm going to stick it on here or you can actually take a millimeter um millimeter um uh I believe the millimeter um, uh, ruler and you can actually put it in there and you'll be able to see so it's gonna flow up and I'm gonna be able to see my oil where it's at and I'll be able to mark it I'll be able to keep track of it what I like what I don't like how high it is blah 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 but that's what I did with this and it was pretty simple and it was cheap and it was the quickest way that I could think of to make a, 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 a needle valve that uh, that oil will flow through here fill this chamber up until it gets to that hole then it leaked down to that chamber so then because up here I know, I know you can't see it but it's in here they actually block that so what happened is they made the, the oil or air to go through here pretend this is oil I might have to drill these holes a little bit bigger so the flow rate will be a little bit better but there's little holes here 
on the side here, which is what's where the air is and it goes through the filter, blah, blah, blah. But in this case, I just wanted to fill it up. And then, if you notice, it's going to go through here. And then it's going to leak down and it's come out to here. So, simple, basic, simple, but effective. Very effective, because I tested it out already. And that's how I'm going to know my flow rate. So, I'm pretty happy. I, I, I've been racking my brain on this one, especially my uh, needle, my, 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 my see-through valve, because I needed to know. Uh, there was no way for me to see. I tried different designs, blah, blah, blah. I even bought some expensive stuff, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't really work as, as, as good as this one. So, it's my favorite one so far on this one, which I saw very easily, but I was racking my brain for days. Uh, how am I going to solve this stupid thing? And if you want to turn on the side, you can actually see where it's at too. So e e e there would, there's so many things on this one for $5.99. Um, and this is just a simple uh, little oil water separator, but turn into an indicator. And once it's all done and finalized, I will show you how it works. But that's the best way I've found so far. So uh, if you guys looking to make one of these... Um, Try that. Um, all you need is a file to file that down in the center right where you want. I could go a little bit higher or low if I want, but I went into about almost to the center because I wanted to know. And this is the file that I use. I just sat there. I took it apart. And I started a little bit uh, with a drill bit. I put it on a vice grip and I, and I drilled just a little bit to start. Because you don't want to go all the way through. And then you're going to make a, a, a different design, whatever. And then I just sat there and I went back and forth, back and forth like that. Until this hole was made. A half a moon. You can go bigger if you want too. But remember, we want to limit the amount of flow to go overflow into that valve right there. Okay, that's it on this video. Um, I will see you in the next once I finalize everything.